Ay, ay, ay. Hey, okay, okay, okay. Out to the pay for the grass is always green. I don't do no labels, I call it how I see it. Uh. To the pay for the grass is always green. I don't do no labels, I call it how I see it. Uh. I heard that, y'all. I'm gonna be here for my long. That's what love told me. <laughs> She was like, you gonna be there for like three hours. I said, three yeah. hours? Hell no, nah. it's too late for that. <laughs> I know she was lying. I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm out of here in an hour and a half, max. That's crazy. <laughs> yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of No Label, the podcast. Here, my boy, Nell. Yo, yo. Special shout out to everybody that's been subscribing on YouTube as normal, liking on Instagram, sharing, following, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, all that. Appreciate it. It's normal. Now, go ahead and get to the sponsor. Yeah, shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Guapcoin. Guapcoin. That cryptocurrency for the culture. You know what I'm saying? That black-owned blockchain. Bitcoin just passed 50K. You know what I'm saying? Got the people talking. I mean, hey. Your prediction looking My prediction. Right so my far, prediction going to be looking, gonna be looking solid, man. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it, man. 100K. I'm saying on it. Uh, yo, so today, we're sitting down with one of the people who captures a lot of dope stuff in buffalo and she's she's behind the scenes but you you've seen you've seen her work if you've seen benny conway she was on tour with benny you know what i'm saying she's been on tour with love the the was creative director for for love the genius yeah now i'm creative director Creative, yeah. she's a creative director you know what i'm saying she's she's got a she's got a movie under her belt yeah did an true. amazing did an amazing uh uh what was that screening at the north park theater mm -hmm. super fire and today we're sitting with Eula. So, How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Appreciate glad to have you here. Sit with us. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. I've been I've been waiting. <laughs> I'm like, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah. It, 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 it's funny because it's like he does most of the uh, social media like interactions. Mm -hmm. and so and it was just like we we linked up in uh in the, in the city mm -hmm. and he was just like he's like you know <laughs> you know me and I'm like. I'm like I'm familiar. But even before that, I'm like I'm like we've met before a few times. That's why I'm like we like we know. we we shook hands and like exchanged names and yes. like that. That's cap. Oh, that's cap. That's craziness. You know when he cut his dreads, his memory went with it. So <laughs> you gotta excuse him. You gotta excuse him. Man, so 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 let's 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 start it like how we normally start. What high school did you go to? Performing arts. I knew it. I'm not gonna lie. I knew it. <laughs> Shout out performing arts. Shout man. out to PA. Shout out to PA. We need a counter. Yeah, we, we really, really, we really do. At, no, at the end of the season, we should just put like a montage together <laughs> of everybody that was performing arts. The whole yeah, it's a lot of us. <laughs> no, for real. Man, what was most? What high school was most? I just nah, for oh, real. No, no. Landslide. Facts. Our last guest. Our last. We just did a uh, lavish uh, Jones. Mm -hmm. We had him. We had him here last. Um, so what was your experience like at PA? It was all right. From what grades? I, w I was there since I started fifth grade. So I was there all the way up until I graduated. So I was there forever. That's but, funny. um, I mean, honestly, like, that's just, that's kind of like the origin story of being there is like how I got into like film and stuff like that. And uh why well, i wound up wanting to be a director more than an actress because that's mm. what i initially went for theater yeah and then i got a little taste in directing and then after that it was like yeah i don't want to <laughs> be on screen no more like i don't want to be in front of nobody i want to be behind the scenes so i mean it's a dope school man but you know everything could always be better yeah okay so we we do a lot of uh pa praise on this show because i i went to i PA. love pa i mean it's near and dear to my heart but I'm I'm curious on, on what, from from your perspective, what was the parts where it's like I was like, eh, it could have been better. It's just the administration, but I also feel like that's kind of just like with with any school. Yeah. Um, and they also don't. 
it's just not enough for certain majors. A lot of majors get more. Yeah. This than other like the theater majors don't get nothing. Like we was in the classroom, all motherfuckers got a whole orchestra. I'm like, hey yo, like you know right. what I mean. So it's just like stuff like that. It's just not distributed, and also like they were just the administration was just real like. You could like hum in the hallway, and I'm always like, stop. You like, we go to a whole food. Like, I just came out of singing for like two hours. You know, <laughs> you stop singing. Like, right? Like, dance for your kids skipping through the hallways. Like, I literally just did a test where I had to twirl. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you was twirling on the test, bro? <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I was a music major. I ain't never say that. I was a music major, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, Pia is dear, dear to my heart. So, no, you know. No, it's a great, it's a, it's a great spot. So, were they able to put a camera in your hands prior to you graduating? Nah, I didn't pick up a camera till I got to college. When I the, the second time when I went back, and I studied communications, I took a Photoshop class. Um, and they let us like take out like rent out cameras or whatever, and we would have to take pictures. And I kind of just I was already doing or like had ideas of doing films, like I had scripts, I was like ready to do that. Then I picked up the camera, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of dope. It's, like, the same thing, essentially, as far as, like, telling a story, but, like, just through stills. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, this shit is kind of fire. So then when I got back home from school, I was like, all right, I'm going to just, I just want to, like, take pictures. So then I just started it. Uh, at first, I was, like, renting a camera from, I'm not going to name the place, because I got beef with them. No free It's in Buffalo? Yeah. Uh... I think I might know what you're talking about, but... Is it near Delta Sonic? <laughs> Delta Sonic... In, on Maine? In the northern part of Buffalo. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got no beef with Delaware Photo. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. It's, it's another place. About. Anyway, man, fuck them. Anyway, <laughs> um, I was renting the camera out from them <clears throat> uh, like a couple days at a time, and I would just like go shoot, practice. I was doing shit for free. And then eventually, like, people were like, oh, can I pay you to take... I did, like, basketball, sports and stuff. And then it just kind of kept going from there. And so I, I just kept with it. And now I'm... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> doing, doing stuff that I wasn't even thinking about. Like, oh, I'm, I want to do this. Like, I wasn't thinking, oh, I want to do tours. Mm -hmm. It just... I just, It happened. I was good, I'm good, I mean, I'm good at it. So it just kind of, like, snowballed into that, so... No, nah, that's fire. I love what, was, what was it about directing that made you want to pivot from, like, being an actress or acting? That's what you originally wanted to do. Like, was your heart really set on that, or you were just kind of doing it just to do it, as far as the acting? No, nah, my heart was set on acting. I mean, I really just love movies. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was like, damn, I want to act. I was, like, a really... I don't know what the word is. But, like, you know, know, a kid. Like I Expressive? Was like, yeah, I was a really expressive kid. Like, I was silly. I did... All types of, like, I would do, like, acting stuff just in general anyway. So then my mom, my sister, two of my sisters went to performing arts. My one sister was already there um, still. And so my mom's like, well, why don't you just go to performing arts, study theater? I said, okay. So I auditioned. And it was like, I got nervous once I started doing it in front of other people. Like, I could do it in front of the family. But then once it was, like, all these random kids I don't know, I was like, I don't really know if I am liking this. But, you know, I just stuck with it. But... I started writing more, too. So, like, mm -hmm. I, we took creative writing classes, the lessons. And so when we started making up stories, and I was just, like, writing stuff, I'm like, okay, like, this is kind of cool, too. Like, I like taking stuff from my head, putting it on paper. And then we did a project, ninth grade, where we had to take three, like, fairy tales and, like, put them into one short play. And you had mm -hmm. to make it work. Like, could not be any loopholes. It had to make sense. Mm -hmm. The minute I heard that, and she was like, okay, pick a group. And I had my group. I started just writing. I wrote, like, five pages. The other group members, they weren't mad, but they wrote probably, like, only one page of the whole entire script. Mm -hmm. I just was going. Was going crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, my God, this is so good. So I'm like, cool. And then everyone voted me to be the director once we won, like, a competition. And that was, like, our end-of-the-year project was to put it on and have, like, family and friends come. And so everyone was like, well, why don't you just be the director because you wrote it? And I was like, I don't know how to be a director. And that was just kind of it. I mean, I just fell in love with, like, writing something, creating, and having other people do it. And then other people are coming to me like, 
I mean, it's kind of the gratification for real. Like, mm-hmm. it's nice when people are like, oh, that's like, it was so cool that this happened, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I thought of that. That, that shit was raw, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> and so it was just like, dang, like, I had this idea, I wrote it down, and I made it come to life under, like, all of my direction, under all of my, you know, ways and that. So I was like, yeah, I, I like this a lot better. Especially because I don't really got to be the mm-hmm. front mm-hmm. face of everything. So it was, like, easier. Er, er. Nah, and that's... It. I love hearing the stories of how people find they they lane mm-hmm. and, and just and creativity in general. And it's just like that's why I give so much like kudos to PA because it's like it gives you the freedom. Even if you like like oh, I'm not really feeling this, it they'll give you like well you're clearly creative because you're here, so yeah. they let you kind of pick your path. No, I, I, yeah, because when I have kids, I don't want them in the school system. Like I'm a teacher full time, mm. so it's like I will gladly not put my kids in school. It's like either they're not going to school or they're going to a performing arts school. Mm. So, yeah, absolutely. So you were doing, uh, you said you started pivoting and doing like the photography or really doing like sports photography, sports photography, doing stuff for fun. Well, how, what was that feeling like when you first got paid to like do something that you already enjoy doing and were doing for free? I mean, was it like I think I could think I could make a career out of this, or like, oh, this is really something that I could do for the rest of my life, or was it just nah? Oh, I mean, like, it was cool. I was like, oh shoot, like I made money off doing this. <laughs> like it was, it was raw. But I always say, and I feel like it's hard for people uh, to understand, like when it is when you want to do something so grand. Like obviously, I want to make like I want to make blockbuster hits. Like I don't want to just be like some random director that makes like a good movie. Like I want blockbuster. I want classic. I want cult classics Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i want to make those type of movies so like obviously if you're good enough you get a lot of money like Mm -hmm. motherfuckers gonna pay you a lot a lot of bread for that it's not about the money or the fame or none of that so when i first got paid for the camera stuff i was like okay like this is cool like cool i can make money but i wasn't like oh like i can just get better and get like so much more money because i know people like i knew people who did this stuff already Mm -hmm. so i was like oh like i know these people are making hundreds of dollars at a time for this I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm like, yo, look at that cool ass shit I made. And then that was it. And then when people are sharing it, they're like, oh, this is raw. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it's like, I, the love for just creating that shit is just kind of, that's it. So, and then people are like, oh, so you would do it without getting paid? I never said that. <laughs> so you enjoy being a struggling artist? <laughs> I never said that. But I hear you. And I it's mean, a, it's beauty and struggling, though. Absolutely, yeah, there's a lot of character. You also want to get compensated for your work, especially. Yeah, I never said I never said I didn't, but I'm saying I'm not in it for the money. Yeah, like yeah, the money definitely. is not what draws mm-hmm. me to the craft. Yeah. The craft itself is what draws me to it. Yeah, it's just happening. You know? Money is the side effect of side effect. Side effect of yeah. Of I mean, it's gonna work. be nice too. I can create generational wealth. That's nice. Absolutely. I get to do you know what I'm saying some cool shit in the community. Come back, do this. Mm-hmm. But like other than that, it's just kind of like. I don't really care for real. I still want to get paid, though. So if anybody pulled this up when I win my first Oscar, <laughs> I never said I didn't want to get paid. Thank you. <laughs> Heard that. Heard that. Uh, at any point, did you do, like, music videos or anything like that? Yeah. I hate doing music videos. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot of videographers say that. <laughs> I hate doing music videos. I hate doing music videos. What, what, are, what are some uh, things that artists should know when dealing with a videographer, like common courtesies? Do you like the term videographer? He uses he, yeah, he, 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 he keeps kills, saying it. I, I don't know if it's, is it like the, is videographer. Like I just, I'm more so like the term video production. I don't know. I don't really like the title of video. I ain't putting on no, no production, though. That's, <laughs> so, no. Videographer is fine because that's what I do. So, yeah. No. All right, but yeah, his question. I mean, you could do whatever. Y'all could say whatever it is. I don't really care. But um, what was the question? Or, uh, so, what are, what are some things <laughs> I, an artist should know, like common courtesy when dealing with a videographer? Please. Do not I can cuss, right? Oh, absolutely. Please do not bring is this the camera? Yes, you <laughs> please do not bring your fucking friends that are gonna sit here and try to tell me what to do or, or spit out ideas. Oh my god. Shut the fuck up. I didn't ask you. You're not getting paid for this. That part. You're just here drinking henny. Oh Shh, look cool in the back. That's all. That's it. Then nobody <laughs> please don't, please don't. You know what I mean? Unless that's like somebody who is like in charge of your creative stuff. Then, but you have to let me know that. You got random niggas in my ear like, it would be cool if you did this. Would it be cool? Then you do it. Why aren't you shooting the video then? Like, why is he paying me? Would you like the camera? Um, no, nah, that's valid. That, that is, it's, that's the most annoying thing because it's like, don't, don't. Yeah. 
don't, don't, whatever. Yeah, and it's just a respect. It's a respect thing. It's like I'm getting paid to do this for my input. You're now you're bothering me. And then, <laughs> but then also like you don't think that we already discussed this before we started shooting. You thought I just came here and was like, okay, we can come up with ideas as we go. Mm-hmm. It's not how things work. Keep your entourage in check, man. Keep the entourage. Keep the entourage in check, in check man. Just, just. Pay them to stand in the back <laughs> and smoke blunts and stuff, whatever they be doing. But I, I mean, music videos are just not my thing. No. I, 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 cause I don't like music videos that don't make sense. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot, like cre- even creatively, as far as like, uh, what's one do? Uh, what's his name? Cole Bennett, lyrical lemonade. Mm-hmm. He do stuff, and that joint be like fire creatively. Don't, don't make any fucking sense. I have no, no uh, idea what's going on and why these. I wouldn't agree with that. We these random glasses of jars are like flying around this man while he's rapping. I don't like it. So I wouldn't say it doesn't make sense, but it sure, doesn't. Man. A few, a few of them. It's I music mean, videos that literally do not make, make sense. sense. Everything in life doesn't correlate. Everything doesn't make sense. But to say none of it makes sense is kind of crazy. Woo. Give me an example of a vi- of a music video. My okay, actually, let me narrow it down because particularly I'm talking about hip hop and rap. That's the most stuff that doesn't make sense to me. R&B is kind of like, eh. Well, I could argue because it was like a mushroom and shit, and I just whatever. I thought that was kind of fire. <laughs> it was fire, but like anyway, it doesn't make matter. Give <laughs> me an example of a good music mushroom. video. Good days. Good days. She like popped out and started doing all this. Mm-hmm. I could think of one by the time by the end of the interview. I can't off rip. That's. Convenient. <laughs> you think Convenient. I'm Cole Bennett's best friend? I just know his whole catalog. Convenient. No, not his. I'm saying in general, like ones that aren't like with, have to do with money and stuff. Like motherfuckers throwing money. Uh, pan to the money. Pan to the alcohol. Pan to the girls. All right. Well, you, you were, I thought you were specifically speaking of Cole Bennett, lyrical lemonade. Just that's what I thought the conversation. No, concept because was. Concept I will was. say that some of his concepts are dope and they do make sense. I'm saying sometimes creatively, I'm just like, eh, I don't like, I don't really get where this came from. That is like, and I'm not saying everything always has to correlate, but like if you want, it's it be the song versus the music video, and mm-hmm. that's where I'm having like a tough time. I'm like, okay, because like Missy Elliott's music videos used to be crazy, like she'd mm-hmm. just be doing some stuff, but also like she's not rapping about certain stuff that I would feel like. Needs the, the yeah, like she can be in the garbage bag because mm-hmm. she's talking about some super duper fly. Okay, you in the garbage bag with some glasses? I I can't argue with that. You know what Word. I mean? But no. like, no, nah, it's funny because I'm like I'm thinking of the sense like my mom didn't allow us to watch music videos growing up. Mm. Like she was just like absolutely not. And it was funny. I was in my uh, classroom. I played music for the kids, and I was watching the uh, old Hot Boys video, mm-hmm. and I'm just looking at it like. I'm like, if I was a parent, I wouldn't want my kids watching this either. <laughs> they be wilding. Yo, video. it's just like, it's like, okay, pan to the money, pan to the, pan to the girls, pan to you doing something illegal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, why, why, why do I want my children consuming this? Oh, I feel like an old head, but it's like, nah, like tell us, tell a story one, and then at least, at least. Get creative, like, and I feel like that's been my biggest gripe with uh, hip hop in general. Mm. Is it's like people are refusing to get creative in the for 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 marketability. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be marketable than just genuinely getting creative. And there's, but it's also just like you're. My thing is, you're paying all of this money, and I and I don't know if it's like again, like obviously I don't know the ins and outs as far as like these artists, but like you're paying all this money, right, for this. I will call it a video production because at that level, it's a video production. It's mm-hmm. not like somebody hailing handheld camera and then that's it. Like mother's got cranes. And, sure. You know what I mean? Like that's a video production for the music video. But you're paying all that money and there's no like creative direction, no just like cool like scenery. Cause at that at that point it's not videography, it's cinematography. Mm-hmm. Like Victoria Monet's uh All My Mama oh, video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That video is it's fire. That video is amazing. It's fire. Like, it's so dope. That's like, cool. just the visuals, the joint, where she, the, like, she's in the car and the men are carrying, like, that joint is raw. It's hell. Absolutely. And if she would have did, the dancers in there, the choreography, like, she paid, and then, like, just the homage to, like, you know what I'm saying, the A and stuff, and it's yeah. just, like, at the end, and, it, the you know what I'm saying, like, that video production salute. is dope. Yeah. But, like, if she would have did anything else, 
like just some like weird regular shit. I would have been like, eh. yeah, I, it, it would have been disappointing. Right. Absolutely. An example of like Mike, Mike, Mike. A good example of a person that does hip hop but has videos that make sense, Joyner Lucas. True. All, all his videos. All his videos. All his videos sense. match his songs perfectly. Perfect sense. That's yeah. Exactly what he's saying. That's a fact. What's in the, have, he also writes about like specific things. Well, he tells a lot of stories too. Yeah, storytelling. I like you know what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying like if you're gonna t- if you're telling a story and then you're not doing it, it's just kind of like. That's a waste of a song in in a production. Facts and the production budgets is, is can get steep. What's the name? Uh, have you seen the uh, Free Music Party? Free Music Party's uh, video. Is that like, the one where they on the horse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I only saw a snippet of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, okay, I would. I uh, wish you'd seen the whole thing because that dude, that dude's fire. Uh, Aaron, I believe his name. Aaron. I don't know. Who did the video? Yeah, he's from here, but he he's super fire. Go check it out. Free Music Party. Uh. Yeah. Where the party I like the snippet that I saw. I thought it was pretty dope. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't want to step on to- favorite. I want to ask your favorite uh, music videos, but I don't want to step on. What's your favorite music, like, favorite music videos? Oh, uh, um, I don't really have, I don't really watch music. Like, I watch them, but, like, not enough to be like, oh, my oh, favorite. I'll, like, I'll, like, watch it eventually. Like, <clears throat> but I don't know. I probably want to Kendrick Lamar's. Okay. I forgot. Hmm? Day free. Day free in the homies. Yeah. Oh, the joint, um, they have, it's a song he did with J-Rock's freestyle. So yeah. J-Rock's thing. I like that. But it, it's because um, whoever did it, when they were like side by side and like one was in slow motion while the other one was rapping, that shit was so raw. Crazy. That was clean. <laughs> I'm sitting here like. Wild freestyle. Wild oh, okay, freestyle. Okay. And I'm literally, I, first of all, I like the song. I love J-Rock. I think mm-hmm. J-Rock is very underrated. Absolutely. He's not on a lot of people's radar, but that man really be spitting out. Shout out to J-Rock. His last, but his last project was amazing. It like really he, it was. Didn't, he didn't get, he got, a, I think he, he got a yeah, Grammy. He got a Grammy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like that album as but a But does that form, matter? Because we don't care about the Grammys, right? Uh, people care about the Grammys. People show up every year. I'm just saying. If, you, if you're real convenient, how people want to bring up the They go on stage to talk shit. They go on stage to talk shit. real convenient about it. It is. They It's... They mad because they didn't get a Grammy. <laughs> Everybody who didn't get a Grammy is, oh, I don't care about the Grammys. I'm talking about just, like, the public in general. It's like people say, oh, fuck the Grammys, we don't care about the Grammys, but then when it comes to their favorite artist, well, he's Grammy nominated and he has a Grammy. Which one is it, bro? Do we care about well, it or not? Well, you can't. Is it's it leverage. Uh, or not? It's leverage. You can't is do it that validation because... or not? Well, like I'm talking thing... about in terms of the art, not in terms of, like, you know, getting a higher price because you're Grammy nominated. Hey, go ahead. Wait, what do you say again? What you just I was said. saying in terms of like the craft and the art, not in terms of like having that Grammy nomination or Grammy award attached to your name because now you're at a higher prestige and you could charge a higher price for like feature shows, et cetera. Mm. Mm, I don't know. Award, awards are political. It doesn't really matter. Like, it don't, it don't matter. I feel like people always want to be a, like, get that validation from an award just for their their work. Like, Yes, it's cool. Like everybody tells you, yo, yo, this is dope. Like, but where my plaque at? Where, where I just the think it's at? consistently moving the goalposts. Like, do we care? It's definitely, it's, oh, it's definitely a lot of, a lot it's of goalposts. It's really that moving. simple. Do we care? Or do we not? It's a lot of goalposts moving. I think, I think we need our own awards show. Yes, it's a fact. We absolutely and, do. Yeah, and it's like that's one thing I had beef with. Like, like MTV Awards, like music television, used to be for music videos. Like there's been, it was like a, like I say a good ten years, even shit, even to now, amazing videos that didn't get awards mm. because they didn't even have a section for it, mm-hmm. and like that's crazy, like it, it's 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 a lot of creatives who did dope shit who deserve to be, like a spotlight for it, like and as as much as content creators as there are now at editing and mm-hmm. like there should be a. a I mean, what they got the YouTube awards, but I, I didn't. I didn't watch the last one. I probably should have. But it's just like, no, like best edits and best transitions, best like all of that stuff. Like, nah, really break it down to give these editors and these videographers, video production people, their credit. You know what I'm saying? It's it's necessary. Like, it, but hey, we we taking one one step at a time. Shout out to all the people in, doing their independent. Uh, awards and stuff like that, get mainstream. Shout out to Seven One Six Awards. Yeah, mm-hmm. fire. You know what I'm saying? Um, who are some of your biggest inspirations uh, 
director was. Mm. <clears throat> By the way, that was the top five, but Fuck. we let it rock. What <laughs> top five what? Matter of fact, just think about that for a while. We'll bring it back later on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, what movie? What movie influenced you? The most in in terms of like wow I really love this color palette wow I really love how they translated Ooh. this idea. Training day man. Yeah. Training day dog. <laughs> like Lonzo. <laughs> training day. First of all, it's my favorite movie, and I also I literally love Denzel Washington. Like mm -hmm. that's my guy. Like I've seen every movie, every television show, and everything he ever directed, produced, whatever you name it, I saw it. I probably know the words to American Gangster. Like it's crazy, <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> you blot that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> but um, Training Day, and it took me I think till like the third time I watched it to realize that all of that happened in one day. Mm. And I didn't realize it because I wasn't like I was paying attention, but I wasn't really like I was like obviously involved with the story. I'm not looking at all that happened in one day. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. I'm like, this is why you got the same stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But the the color palette, the just like when dude smokes like the PCP, that's, like that's the, the first the thing effect. I thought. Yeah, that's the color palette. Yo. Just like the camera movements and and all that stuff, and then. I mean, the storyline is obviously, like, just kind of, like, dope, but it was just, like, I don't know. That and Man on Fire as far as the color palette. Man, yeah, on, Man fire, on Fire. It, but really it was the same. Yeah. It's the same, like, thing as far as, like, the camera and the, like, long exposure, the, like, jotty stuff, and it's just, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Stuff like that is just really raw. But Training Day was, like, mad fire, because I'm like, oh, this is all in one day. Like, you know, movies usually is like, oh, this stuff is happening over a course of time or yeah. even a few days, even if it's just like just two, besides mm -hmm. like horror films, because they're usually like one night Thanks. into the morning. But like, it was just like crazy. I'm like, yo, this happened in one day. Like all this crazy stuff, what was this game murder? People was digging up houses, like money from the house. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> nah, I love a good L.A. cop movie. Mm. I forgot the one name of the one joint. Uh... <laughs> I want to say King, not Kings County or something, but it was like Forrest Whitaker, Keanu Reeves, um, Common was in that joint. But they, it was like L.A. L.A. Police, like and just mm -hmm. showing like how corrupt it was mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Like I, I, I love, I love a good corrupt cop story. Mm. But um, what are what are your what are what are your uh, direct well, favorite movie influences like director wise, color palette wise? I brought it up before, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, my gosh. I love that movie. I love Wes Anderson films when it comes to just, like, the color schemes and color palettes. That joint was crazy. Mm -hmm. i always seen it. I still, ha I still have to watch it. Bro, in full. Fire. But, like, I've definitely, I know exactly what, what you're talking that, about. That joint was amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo. And every Oscar one I hear, I was like, I'm not even mad, bro. Because <laughs> it was, like, obviously certain stuff I want to win, but I'm like, I'm not even mad because mm -hmm. that joint was, like, crazy. That and everything, everywhere, all at once. Did you watch that? Hell yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. That joint was nice. <laughs> They did their that thing. That joint was fire. Only thing I, my only, like, critique of that, it was just, like, it was some parts were so, like, far out, and it was just, like, fingers turning into hot dogs and, like, stuff like that, and it was just, like, it kind of, like, threw me off a little bit. Mm. But it's, like, that's, like, that, that Korean or that Asian, like, twist on their Films, mm. so it was like I, I like I I appreciated it for for what it was, but like those yeah. parts, the only parts that kind of. I mean, it was those like I mean it's sci-fi, so I was like I was taken aback. I was like, what is going on? But it's sci-fi, and it's like a it's like a multiverse thing. Yeah, like, it's like about like that. So I was like, oh, okay, like I get it. But that joke was fire. I was I was pleasantly surprised because I don't really like sci-fi movies for real like that. Depends on what it is. Yeah, I Same. love it. And it took me a while to watch it because you was gassing it up for a while, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just go ahead and watch this joint. And I was like, all right, no. now we know what he's talking about. I love, I love a good sci-fi movie. Mm. I feel like we don't have enough like black sci-fi movies. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I'm saying? Expand that imagination. Mm. They only want to show you as niggas for the most part, or slaves. And so it's yep. like. <laughs> Struggle stories. Man, like I'm good on that, yo. Like give me the, give me the, like uh. Lovecraft Country. 
as mm-hmm. Love Cap Country yeah. episode mm-hmm. fucking seven, where she's she's out of space and is like, mm-hmm. like, what do you what do you want to do? <laughs> it's like, uh, that anything. show was so bro, good, that shit bro. Was great. Amazing show. They should have never canceled it. I'm hating. Yes, it was canceled. We had a full was argument. Bro. We had we was arguing for like 15 minutes on whether it was no, canceled. no. Hold on. I don't know when I said it was canceled. You said it wasn't. Don't Roll back the tape. It wasn't Roll canceled back per it was, se. It was canceled. They did just not. HBO canceled. They did not renew it. They had, but it's yeah, also it's just, based on a novel, and they felt like they had nowhere to go. They had a, they had a, they had a second season. Okay, it was so gonna yeah, be you said post, it was canceled. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. gonna be post uh, Civil War, but the South won. But the way it ended, uh, Jonathan Majors, his character died. It was over. But he's gonna. He had a son. I feel like you know okay. what. <laughs> I feel like those are one. That's one of those shows where, like, I'm like, dang, like, I really wish we could have got more than one season. Mm-hmm. But I also don't like when people ruin things mm-hmm. like, that's by true. doing true. too much. True. Like and I feel like that's kind of what they whoa, were at. Whoa, whoa, they were whoa. like, Game of Thrones was fire. I never seen it. The last season was not that great. I never watched Game. I'm not into <sighs> Game Damn. of Thrones last season. It, it, the writing got Y'all bad. Was... The writing got bad. But the last like two, three episodes were fire. Okay. <laughs> I, that's that means crazy. I don't agree, but I'm not gonna argue. Yeah. <laughs> so the so the war the war wasn't fire. I, I just want the two directors to watch it because like it I didn't I don't care for dragons and shit like that. Yeah, I don't either. But once the 2020 came, I just sat down. I just enjoyed it for the while. I'm like, oh okay, this is actually like it's not that bad. So you don't like 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 Lord of the Rings none of that? Nah. Damn, just me? Damn. I don't like I'll my, stand on that hill bag. by myself. I, I'll stand on that hill by myself. I don't <laughs> like time period <laughs> stuff. <laughs> like, and I'm saying, my like, man. medieval time period. Mm-hmm. Sparta. Well, you know what I'm saying? I just, Are you a I, Harry Potter fan? I said, good question. I'm not. Okay, so I just watched all of the movies for the first time this past year. My sister is obsessed with Harry Potter. She swears by it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fine, I'll sit down and watch it. Obviously, the first, like, two, three years, like, I'm like, uh. But, like, it, the storyline is it's actually pretty good. Like, But I would not watch it again. Hold on, how many I don't are there? Care. There's, like, like seven. seven. Oh. I just wouldn't watch it again. I was gonna but I won't be like, oh, it's it's bad. I whatever. It, it's a dope storyline. I think it's I think it's cool. But like, I just can't. I can't get into uh, time period stuff. Just makes me so mad. Yeah, I'll probably I, I really that. hate. Like all of a sudden, like, like people are like, oh, watch Bridgerton. I'm not watching that. <laughs> if it's anything past like the '60s, as far as the time period, I'm not watching it. Like Peaky Blinders. Not watching it. Oh my god. I can't do it. Never I can't do it. it. It's boring. <laughs> oh I don't care. <laughs> Hey, I will say this: the ride at Universal Studios, the Harry Potter ride, shit is fire. No, Harry Potter ride at shit is fire. I didn't watch Harry Potter growing up; like, I wasn't allowed to. But that that junk was fire. Yeah, everybody in class was reading the book. Didn't read it. Nah. I, I wasn't up. a fan of books then. Books is too damn big. I don't even like reading group chats. Yeah, and I, I, you know what? And I hate when people are like, "Oh, the book was so much better." Duh. My like, thing you is don't like, need a budget for a book. It's not even that. Like, because if you were to put the Harry Potter movies or the Hunger Games, you were to do it with everything that's in the book. Do you know how long? First of all, the movies are already long. They're like the three-hour mark. They you know how down. long they already would be? Mm-hmm. Y'all would be mad sitting in the movie theater. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, it was better in the book because this happened. Like, yeah, you can write more details in a book because you have time to just go you know, and whatever. But Hunger mm-hmm. Games is fire anyway. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah. I don't I care like what Hunger nobody Games. say. I don't need to read the books. I like Hunger Games. I don't care. Did you see Oppenheimer? Oh my God. Yes. You liked it? I don't know. Man, visually, cinematically, that was a beautiful movie. Cinematically, mm-hmm. it was good. It was a be- it was interesting, like, because like I, I like history, like I'm a history buff a little bit. Like I I was interested because I was like, oh, like I didn't know that all of that happened. Mm-hmm. Like also, it was kind of crazy because when I saw Albert Einstein, I was like, wait, what? And I thought that motherfucker was like, <laughs> in like the 1800s. I'm like, I thought he... But it was like interesting to see like how he brought a certain type of physics to the U.S. It was just like, it was like, oh, okay, like mm-hmm. this is kind of whatever. But visually, cinematically, it was a really beautiful movie. Like it was yeah. like the storytelling through the lens was nuts. I was like, I'm... And it was long as hell, but I'm sitting here like, I went to see it in the driving. I'm like this. Like the whole time, I'm like, this shit is crazy. Mm-hmm. 
I watched it on my computer. I probably did it then. Oh. Nah, man. Nah, 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 nah. nah. It's, it's certain, it's certain movies you can't. Yeah. You, you got to go they, they watch. They was gassing it so high, and I'm like, eh, I'll watch it. it like, you got to watch I, it on I, a big I, screen. I have a good, like, size computer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, it is pretty fucking big. <laughs> but it was just like, I could see it cinematically, like, being super dope. Yeah, like, it was, it was, yeah, that was dope. And then even, I like the, uh, the way they did the montages, like, between scenes sometimes. Mm. They would, like, show the bomb explosions and that. Yeah. Did you guys see Talk to Me? No. Is that the horror film with the hand? Yeah, I, I said fuck that. I wasn't doing that. It's I just recently film? seen American Fiction. That shit was fire. You gotta go. See, you gotta see Talk to Me. <laughs> that joint was. F- it and the thing is, I'm really critical of horror uh, horror movies. Like as far as like any other movie, really critical because I hate the same type of stuff like scary movies, ghost movies. I hated um The Conjurings. All of them. Those are born. The first ones. All of them. <laughs> that first one is the only one I really like. I fuck with the first one. It I was like, the, I'll, the Insidious series Insidious are better. Is, is pretty good. It, better? Better than The Conjuring? So, yes. Uh, You're nuts. That's, that's the best. <clears throat> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me, At least I got let somebody. Me, let hey. me make sure. Let me make sure I'm thinking of the right movie. Insidious. Insidious where... is with the Red Devil with the little boy. It's all the same shit, bro. I thought that shit was. I re, okay. It is connected in the same universe. Yeah. But reason why I don't rock with it is because it's like they talk about like astral projection, and like and that's like a real thing, and then they try to make people afraid of it. So I'm like, well, that's why I, I, I don't think people should be it. afraid of it, but it's not something that's like, oh, you can just do it and that's it, because you could really get stuck in that shit, and then that's over for you. You're done. I don't know. No, it's okay. We'll talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but City is better than the Conjuring Giant, Tink. man. Oh, man. So, so we, yeah, we went heavy on the movies. Shit, uh, let's talk about... Uh, sorry, I might as well get a new Levi, then. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about how that came yeah. out. Talk about what? It's Levi, right? Oh, 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 yeah, I didn't hear you. Oh, I thought Sorry, I no, I wasn't being <laughs> sarcastic, my fault, yeah. But yeah, um, like, Levi, how did that come about? Oh, man. So, Khalil, I had been trying to get... I was trying to get a short film off the off the ground for like two years, and I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get it done, cause it was like no interest. Everybody always say that they're interested and want to like act and stuff, and then the minute that it get real, everybody like, eh, I don't know. I'm like, all right, bitch, well, never mind. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. So I couldn't get it off the ground. Khalil has always wanted to work with me, and so he had that script. Him and uh, Tiana, shout out Tiana. Um, they wrote a script together. And so he was like, hey, he had a director. A director backed out on him. He had other projects. He was like, never mind, I can't do this. Um, he also was trying to, like, push it back, like, a year or two. And Khalil mm. was like, I want to get this shit done now. Like, Reckon this so. year, in the next year. So I'm like, okay. So he hit me. He was like, hey, I have a script. I want to pitch it to you. Da-da-da. I felt real, uh, like, I was like, hi. I was like, yeah. Somebody want to pitch me a script. I was feeling mad nice about myself when somebody <laughs> said that. Because that, that's, a, you know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. professional. I'm like, oh, shit, whatever. But um, so he pitched it. I read, like, the first four pages. And then I was like, all right, I'm in. Mind you, it's like 188 pages. Or 120. The 120 scenes is like 88 pages. I was like, I read the first four. And I was like, all right, I'm in. He was like, you read the script? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> not the entire thing. But I'm like, yeah. I just like the way it was written and, like, how it started. I'm like, absolutely. I want to be a part of this right now. We. Mm-hmm. I'm huge on the start of movies. Yeah. Like, it was will... a it's a really good start. I'm like, hell yeah. Let's do this shit right now. I'll turn around from the movie theater like if I'm like, if I miss like the first scene. <laughs> like, I will be like in the car furious <laughs> if I miss the first scene of a movie. But, um, and then he was like, oh, um, so he was like, okay, great. And then he was like, if there, that was in February of 22? No. 21? I don't know. I COVID, don't remember. COVID? COVID? Mm, mm, mm. When did we do the premiere? We just did the premiere the 20, uh, in 23 of May. We finished it. It doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> 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 um, my shit be running together. I'll be doing too much. Um, so that was February. By March... We were um, ready to hold auditions. <laughs> like, I got, and that was like end of February, like the 20 something. And so then I brought uh, Tommy on, who was like my AD, my assistant, whatever. We just got everything rolling. And then we just got the ball rolling. We did auditions. 
finalized auditions, finalized the cast, and then we just started started doing everything that needed to be done to shoot it. So that's kind of how that came about, and that was an experience. I believe it. What was the hardest part about putting the whole film together in general? Was it the auditions? Was it getting people to buy in or sell to the script? Like, what what would you say was the hardest part of it? Before, can I ask before before you answer that one? What is for those who don't know? Like, what does all the responsibilities of the director include? Literally everything. Like I literally like. I have to oversee everything, every aspect of the film. Every from st- from lighting to stage production, like set yeah. production. Yeah, to, yeah, like to at all of everything has to be like everything's like. Oh, okay. Did you want this? I don't know. Do you need this? I don't know. So like it's just like I'm make sure everybody's doing their job. Make sure that we have this. I make sure that I'm handing out tasks for everybody to do. Like Tommy, go call these people. Make sure we can film this day in this bar. We need police cars. We need, yeah, I'm saying just, like, all crazy stuff. Um, So, honestly, as the director, you do, like, obviously, there's people that do the job, but you do everything. Like, you have to make sure that they're doing that job. You have to tell them what you want, tell them what you need. Yeah, I'm saying, like, even with, like, the budget for, like, the producers and stuff, like, you have to tell them, like, oh, I need this crane, and it costs 100 grand. And they're like, okay, let's go get it. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 everything. The director do everything for real. It's a hard job, man. It ain't just telling people what to do on the screen and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sit in a chair. It's a lot of like behind the scenes work. You know what I mean? So especially when you're hands on. I mean, not every director is like super hands on, but like me, I'm finna microscope everything because I want to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Mm -hmm. Because any one hiccup in doing a film production, man, that it alters everything. Word. You miss a day, and that's a full day of Bro, shooting. It's a, like that's it's schedules. Over. Yeah. That's like yeah. Availability. And it's time. And it's time and money. Like Word. that's money that you just wasted not shooting a day. So it's just like you can't waste people money. Absolutely. Uh, but the hardest part, <laughs> believe it or not, the hardest part was getting people to be extras. <laughs> like I kid you not. It was, it was, we had a party scene that we needed to get done. And we're like, hey, we need extras, whatever, whatever. Mind you, like, you don't shoot at the time of day that the time of day in the script is. Like, we shooting at 8 a.m. for a night party scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, inside, putting garbage bags on the window, blocking it out, whatever. So we like, hey, we need y'all call times 8 a.m. Nobody shows up. I think, like, three or four people show up. So we we're there for like two and a half hours, two and a half hours and not shooting this scene. Mind you, it's one of the most intricate scenes that we need. Super like many angles, many different. Two and a half hours and not shooting. So pissed. Stress. I was so everybody was so Stress. pissed. I was so pissed. Like two and a half hours. We calling Khalil's calling like his cousins. We calling family, aunts, uncles. Like hey, y'all, you want to come? Mind you, the high school party. Obviously, you can't have anybody that look too old. Mm-hmm. So. That was the hardest part. Um, that was the hardest part. And then, I guess, like, for me personally, I think that was, like, as a whole. For me personally, it was just, like, I don't want to say managing, but it was, it's a lot of different personalities on set. For sure. And being, like, a woman, motherfuckers will test you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, act like you not head honcho. Like, I literally... And the only reason that you're on this set, like, so, like, I think it was, like, the third or fourth day of shooting, and <laughs> I we, we did a podcast <laughs> as a crew, and I told the story, Khalil hates it, so we, we, we were at a point where it was, like, I think we were towards the end, like, we were getting, finishing stuff up, stuff that we missed or stuff we couldn't get done. We're wrapping stuff up, whatever, we're shooting a, a warehouse scene, and me and Khalil were bumping heads, we, we bumped heads a lot. But it was it's good. I mean, we're both, you know what I'm saying? We wanted this really bad. So yeah, we were both like, yo. So we bump heads all day that day. We get we get to the warehouse scene. I'm like trying to whatever, and he's just standing there. And so real loud without even looking at him, I think we had gotten to like a little argument earlier too. I was like, if you're not in the scene, I need you to get out. <laughs> 
and he stomped his ass out the warehouse. Like, mind you, it's like an unfinished house. All you hear is boom, 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 and then the door, like, slams. And that was... And then you got, like, you know, people who never acted before and people who have acted. So it's like being super hands on with those people, not having to be super hands on with other people. It's like, you know, this person's like, oh, like, I can't... This emergency and this. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So it's like so many different personalities. Personally, for me, that was challenging because... I hate people. <laughs> like, socially, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, really good. So it was, like, a learning experience. Personally, that was just, like, a struggle. But I really learned how to be a leader, like, on set. So I was, like, fine. yeah. But that joint, mm-mm. I don't recommend it, <laughs> uh, making a uh, movie. It's not easy at all. No. So what was the most fulfilling part for you during the process? And what part did you, like, enjoy the most? as far as putting the movie together, shooting, directing? I mean, honestly, like, as much as it was, honestly, finishing the film, because we almost didn't finish it. It almost did not happen. And that was because I made the mistake of uh, scheduling such a short schedule to shoot. (laughs) When I should have added a week or two, I didn't. And we had a lot of hiccups, so we didn't end up rapping in the time frame that we were supposed to. Mind you, Khalil and Tiana funded this, like, out their pockets, like, have saved money for this. So it's only so much money to reshoot and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the last day before we, like, when we took a pause in between shooting, I sat in the parking lot with Tommy after... We, like, handed over all the camera, whatever, and we had a discussion, and Clue was like, I just don't know what we're going to do. We get in the car, and I, like, bawled my eyes out, like, for, like, 20 minutes in the Tops parking lot on Main Street with Tommy because I was so upset that, like, we, you know, I had felt disappointed, and I, like, obviously, like, a lot runs through me, so I felt like I let everybody down, and I was just like, man, I just fucked up so bad. I'm so pissed off. So when we wrapped, like, when we got to shoot again and we wrapped it, I was like, man. And then, obviously, being at the premiere because we sold that shit out. And I was like, hey, yo. That's why, like, I was supposed to have a whole speech. I talked for maybe a minute. And then I handed the mic over because I couldn't even. Mm -hmm. I was just like, So that was was the most fulfilling part, man. And just for everybody, like, the cast and crew, everyone's like, I just loved being on set. I'm like, I'm mean as hell. I don't know why. They're like, I love you so much. <laughs> Khalil, like, she's so, like, literally so mean. I'm like, mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> yeah, that whole, like, just finishing it, seeing it on screen, even with the issues that we had technically, it was just like, wow. Like, I really made a fucking movie. That shit is fire. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's tough. Yeah. And y'all had the, uh, so you had the premiere at North Park Theater. Mm-hmm. What's the next steps for the movie? Like, are you taking it to music? I mean, not music, movie festivals, shopping it. Like, what are the next steps and process? We're supposed to be putting it on streaming services. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on with that. Khalil's handling that. I kind we kind of, we kind of just were like, okay, we're yeah. just gonna take in the moment, and then like, he got like a new job, graduate. Yeah, you know I'm saying so. Yeah. We were just kind of like, oh, so we're supposed to be putting it on streaming services. Everybody keep asking me where they could watch it. Yeah. I have no answer for y'all. I at this point, we've been put on. At this point, we've been to put it on YouTube, but <clears throat> well, YouTube, Tubi, something, Tubi gang. But, yeah, I think, I think so. I don't, I don't know. And we, we kind of like everybody kind of started doing their own thing, but we coming back together. We, we got a meeting. Yeah. And we got another script, so I think we finna do. Right. It's not part two, of Levi, but you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like to hear that. So. So, um, what's the name? How did you end up connecting with Love? And I know she, but it was, she she directed a movie too, and it was just like I don't know if that's how y'all connected. But. Nah, um, damn, how do we connect? I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, oh, um, so I had followed her on Instagram mm, a while ago, and she posted that she needed somebody to do some like video stuff. So I was like, eh, fuck it. Yeah, like, you know, slid up. And then that's how we connected. And then that just kind of, it just, like, kept going from there. I was thinking it was, like, a one-and-done, two-and-done thing. And then mm-hmm. it was just kind of, like, she was, well, she said she needed a consistent person. And I was like, I'm not doing shit. 
<laughs> what up? <laughs> so, and then we, but yeah, she didn't tell me about the movie, but that's not how we connected. We just connected. I, you know, I was like, let me try to get in here. You know what I'm saying? Because she likes to do like more like to document, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the process and stuff. So that's kind of like what I'm into as far as doing videography. But obviously I did videos for her. Those freestyle videos, the demons and Johnny P's caddy and yeah, just go. Yeah, but yeah, we've been going strong for like a year now. I think a year and some change since I started working with her. Where yeah. fellow Pisces, Pisces gang, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and what does the title of being of now being her creative director? What does that entail? Like, what are those job responsibilities? A lot more than I thought. I, I'm not even gonna <laughs> lie. I'm like. So, you know, she knows that I don't really like shooting music videos. Um, so anything that we did was like, oh, okay, like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, whatever. But then she, then she's like, okay, like, you know, she got an album coming out, and it's like, you know, studio album, so it's about to be, like, crazy. So she, like, she was like, you know, like, I'm thinking I need somebody in charge of the stuff creatively, like the music videos, the content how we push out the stuff, you know, somebody that's going to, like, connect and, like, put all this stuff together and I'll just show up and do my thing. It's like, love love don't want to do nothing <laughs> other than she can, what she do, bro. She can do everything, but she wants to do nothing. She <laughs> wants to do absolutely nothing. Like, when I say, like, she does not want to know anything except what time to be there and what to wear, that's it. Like, she I don't care about, it. you know, she just want to do her thing, and that's music. So, um, that's just, so basically I just coordinate the music videos, make sure the content is rolled out, Making no appointments for everything. No, oh, that's funny. So I'm really an assistant. I feel like I feel like she put creative director to make it sound better. But <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, <clears throat> but I'm still gonna do like the photos and stuff because obviously photography. My photography is a little bit uh, stronger than my video. So, but um, <clears throat> yep. So I'm in charge of all of that. It's a no, lot of work. No, that's super. That's super dope. What about you? Uh, Connecting with, with with BSF and Benny to to do the tour stuff. What tour? The tour that you about to go on? The one or the one that I, the, the burden of plugs that I did. The plugs, yeah. Yeah. So, I <laughs> I got on that because of Young World. Okay. You know, Young World is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We you've interviewed him a while back. Um, so he basically there was uh so DZ Williams. You yeah, know who DZ Williams is? Mm-hmm. He was on that couch. Okay. I listen, I I'm sorry. I probably, <laughs> I probably should have watched a few before I came on here. I watched like the most recent ones, but I haven't like deep dived. It's all good. I ain't got time for that. I'm sorry. Anyway, so he shot a video for Open Season, which Benny was featured on the song. And so his assistant was like, Oh, we're looking for people to do BTS. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like get some work, be around, whatever, get photos. So I'm like, somebody sent me the story. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'll inquire, whatever. So I inquired. She was like, yeah, come through, whatever. So I did that. And um, I connected with Open Season. And me and him just, like, clicked. And so the next day, I think, or, like, two days after, he was like, oh, we're shooting another scene. Like, can you come do more BTS? Because he really liked the photos that I did. He was like, you should, should inspire. Like, I need more. Come, come, whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then I got there. And then Young World was there, and then he was like, oh, like, I know who you are. Mind you, no idea who World was. Like, absolutely zero. We followed each other on Instagram, didn't know who the hell he was. I don't know people by face or name for real. So he was like, oh, my gosh, like, whatever. He was like, you know, like, we're going on tour. Like, I need, I want to, like, document the stuff. I want a video of, like, each show. And I was like, hell, yeah, we're going on tour. Like, that's just the tour in general. Like, I didn't, I didn't really care that it was BSF. I didn't care that it was Benny, like. That wasn't the appeal to me. Mm. It was just being on tour. I'm like, that shit fire as hell. I want to do that. Hell yeah. So then we did that. I think <clears throat> the first show was in Atlanta. The second show, I don't remember. Or it, I think it was Charlotte. And by the second show, um, after the first pictures um, from Atlanta, Zach hit me, Zach Warren Films. Mm. He hit me and basically told me that Benny wanted me to do the pictures for him exclusively because, you know, like, it's hard, like, to do both video and pictures at the same time. Absolutely. And Zach was like, I want to focus on just the video because, you know, that's what he does, like, for real. So 
that's kind of how that happened. And uh, but I was taking pictures of everybody, like everybody who was on the tour, all the open acts. It was like twenty of them. It was a lot of open <laughs> acts. I kid you not, it was a lot of open acts. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like fifteen of these niggas for real. Um, he was about to touch on it earlier. I cut him off before he could because I knew this is what I wanted to ask. Who are your top five favorite directors or directors you've gotten inspiration from, like, for, like to help with your craft and create what you've created? Um, let me try not to smack too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Spike Lee for sure. That's just like an OG. Mm-hmm. Um, Oscar Michaud. You know who that is. No, what movies has he done? It's like old, like early nineteen hundred, like nineteen twenties movies. He was like one one of the very first like black directors. Mm. Um, but he made he made um movies that were like wild factors at that time. He also made one like about race that countered one of I forgot what it's called, but it's like a really racist movie. Anyway, um <clears throat> I don't really know. So the thing is, ooh, Jordan Peele. Peele's fire. I don't deep dive into directors like you think I would. <clears throat> I just like movies. So, like, I don't really draw inspiration much. Like, I don't really get inspired by other directors. I think Jordan Peele is probably the number one, though, only because he made psychological horror like psychological horror. And he mm. also made it black. Mm-hmm. And that's, like... I'm real big on that. Like, I kept... Levi kept most of the cast, besides Rosalind, um, black. I kept the crew black. Like, it's just... That's important to me, mm. like, to just build that because there's a lot of... There's a lot of, like, space, a lot of creativity that black people can bring to movies and film Absolutely. that is not showcased because they keep typecasting the same... You know, like Ryan Reynolds and whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, right. um, and also to just be, like, able to do other genres like horror. Like, Us, uh, that shit was nuts. Like, you know, so that's pretty much it. I just really like movies, though. Movies in- inspire me more than the director. I guess I should give them credit. But I just as far as, like, a storyline, any of the coloring, the editing, score, music, all of that. So I look at all the aspects of that, even the cinematography. Which obviously is all different parts. Like everybody has their job, so <clears throat> no top five for real. Top three, that's good enough. <laughs> top three is valid. Who would you say yours are? I feel like we've had this question before, but yeah, it could have changed. Yeah, Scorsese's all oh, definitely on mine. Mm. Um, Eyes Wide Shut was like masterpiece for me. Um, I forgot who else I said. Um, Tarantino. Is on there. Uh, after obvious reasons. Uh, what's the dude name? Uh, with Avatar, was it John Carpenter? No. Is that Avatar? Yeah. James Cameron. James Cameron. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking John. <laughs> what was John Carpenter? Um, he did Halloween. Yeah, but James Cameron is who I'm thinking. James Cameron. Um. I could throw Spielberg in there just for Star Wars. I like I like those other universes. I like like if like y'all don't like the different time periods, I love all that. Like put me in a whole different place in the world. Like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, we didn't I'll say we don't like different time periods. We don't like them. She said she don't like time periods. Did you anything? Yeah, anything before the nineteen? What did I say? Yeah, the nineteen sixties. Yeah, like the stuff yeah. before. Well, technically, it's still a time period movie, but yeah, whatever. But middle yeah. evil. Mm-hmm. Nah, and then like I throw Peel in there. Peel, Peel definitely. I'm I'm nervous about the Monkey King though. He's got a movie coming out called The Monkey King. Monkey Man. Monkey King. Monkey Man. I'm pretty Monkey sure it's Man. Monkey Man. Monkey Man. I'm mm-hmm. about to Google. I'm 100 percent sure it's Monkey Man. Okay. Okay. Back checks. I'm only 80 percent sure. I got you. Yo, I really be serving him up on his podcast. You really don't. You really don't. Stuff. You really be trying to. I'm That's really like word. four and zero. You really you you try to because like you even tried to take credit for saying that uh. You said uh, you you're the one that said uh, Love Calf Country was canceled. You Monkey really man. did, Monkey Man. Thank you. So what am I for? What you mean? Thank you. You said Monkey King. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, 
<laughs> See how he be going? That? Thank you for correcting me. Fuck out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> for, to my for top make, five. Thank you for not letting me sound like an ass. <laughs> you already did. My top five. Um <laughs> it's a dickhead. You know what? I'm gonna keep that shit in there. Keep playing with me. Boss. Uh, oh, hey, yo, that's right. Boss. First um, and only boss. <laughs> <laughs> Some sick shit. Yo. So I got Spike Lee for sure. Um, Tarantino, Wes Anderson, Christopher Nolan. Mm. And I'm going to throw somebody who does music videos, Haji. Valid. Favorite, honorable mention, favorite uh, music video videographer or director? Kid Art. Kid, Kid Art, Art is on there. Kid Art, wow. Um, where? Uh, we also have a third eye segment where we talk about like conspiracy theories, little fire out <laughs> stuff, all that cool stuff. You already mentioned uh, astral projection. We'll get there. It's uh, not a conspiracy theory. It's not. It's, it's it's factual. But it's like I I like to, you know, just for the algorithm. You know what I mean? No, yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> what conspiracy? What conspiracy theory? Uh, so, but we'll we'll work into it. But uh, have you ever read the book um, by James Cameron, Hero's Journey? Mm-mm. So it talks about um, just like how stories in, like, mythology uh, have that similar hero's arc, like, uh, kid kind of, like, coming from coming from nothing mm-hmm. or losing something, goes through this whole process and becoming and realizing they're the hero mm-hmm. within that cycle type of thing. Well, a lot of uh, directors and people who do film, like, study that, and that's, like, it, it ties heavy into uh, mythology. I know you said you're a fan of, like, like fairy tale, like, you had to do the fairy tale mm-hmm. project. Do you ever, like, look into mythology? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite, uh, like, pantheon, mythological pantheon? I looked into it. I never, I didn't, like... Never studied it? I never, like, deep-dived into it. I just looked into it. And I was like, okay, this shit kind of raw. And then that was it. The reason I asked is because a lot of, they say a lot of, like, like, that was their storytelling. That was, like, their movies. Yeah. Back then. So it was, like, mythology is a super dope way to, I don't say come up with new ideas, but, like, new ways to tell the same idea kind of thing. Because mm. each, each culture had their own ways of telling the same story, mm-hmm. which is, which is kind of like what we do with movies. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I always thought that was super dope and uh, just repackaging. Um, movies are kind of like the, the new mythology, in, in, like, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? You can put you in a whole different universe. You can tell this story that you follow this hero, this arc, and go on side missions with the spinoffs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why one of my thing is like I feel like Hollywood and like American like Hollywood and the film production they they typecast a lot of black people and they put us in the these these bubbles mm-hmm. and, and, and it's 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 un it's unfair. What what made you? What made you put such a emphasis on making sure that these black creatives get their ideas off? Um, well, for one, I'm black, so there's that. Um, but I also, just, I I just think it's important because when you like you ever like either eat, drink, or like have watched something or listened to something, and then all of a sudden when people are like oh, like, let me not be so judgmental and box in, and they listen to it, they eat it, they drink it, and everybody's, like, all of a sudden, like, oh, my gosh, this is so amazing, I can't believe I've been missing out on this. That's how it is. Like, you you have, and to a certain extent, white people, especially, like, the writers, they only tell a certain story. And even when they try to tell our stories, which I think is dumb, they need to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Nobody asked y'all to do that. We not right. Re- yeah, you know I'm saying mm-hmm. it's just like why not allow these people to just and like I just watched a video on TikTok and there's this girl she does like a tea time thing she was doing like a Black History version and she was basically saying like <clears throat> you know we're not gonna conform because you're just gonna take what we have anyway and gentrify it literally. So she was like, and she was like, and like, she like named a bunch of like, she was like, even like with sports, when we were eventually allowed to play, like you have all these black athletes who changed the game. Mm-hmm. You got them changing the rules because Simone Biles can do something that nobody else can do. 
against her white counterparts mostly. Yeah. I just think that black people have this power. And then, like, we can help rewrite narratives and stereotypes Absolutely. through that art. And not everybody has to be an athlete or a rapper because that's what they, like, love to say. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, like, you have this art where you could tell any type of story and any type of experience mm-hmm. in any way that you like, whether it's, like, weird hot dog fingers or it's just, like, straightforward, you know what I'm saying, monologues. But there's so much to unpack in the experience that people have that's not trauma, that's not slave that, movies. That part. That is just, like, somebody else also has to put an emphasis on it. Like, as far as, like, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. There has to be somebody else. Like, there has to be more writers or whatever. And, like, obviously you see a rise more in shows, like Issa Rae. You have uh, uh, Quinta Brunson now. So, like, you're seeing this rise, but, like, we need to make it into the film part of that. Like, it, where it's, like, you have people who are have experienced this stuff or know what it's like to be able to tell these stories and have it blockbuster, though. Like, mm-hmm. not like, oh, like a classic black movie that, like, only black people are really going to know the few white people in between and maybe some POCs. Mm-hmm. Like, our blockbuster, Oscar award-winning films. Not like Black Panther. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Not It doesn't have to be a superhero movie. It could just be... Like you have all these, you have a million dramas about, like Steel Magnolias is bunch of, about a bunch of uh, middle aged white women, where one of them dies and then they all come together. It's a drama. It's like and it's just like whatever. And it's like we could literally do that, just the black version. But do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Pressing on more important issues, like you could do that with like pregnancy and the death rate of black women when they give birth in hospitals. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just sure, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And not in a documentary form. I don't want it to yeah. be documentary. I want it to be creative. I want it to tell a story, and I want it to be like, people are like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because one of my biggest, like, gripes was, like, Tarantino made the Django. Mm. It was like, no black director could have told this story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like I don't, I don't necessarily like put it fully on them, but it's like, would, would Hollywood fund it? That's what I was literally just about to say. You know what I'm saying? Would Hollywood fund a black person telling a black story about a slave beating the shit out of his slave master? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of different, a lot of different stories that need to be told and mm-hmm. put on the screen that mm-hmm. we don't get to that don't get to shine enough. Um, and once again, when it going back to like like mythology, mm-hmm. like you can tell those stories with black people, but mm-hmm. they've whitewashed so many mythologies in itself because every spiritual people have their own stories. That's their mythology. And it's like, if you look at everywhere, every country, every continent, there are black people who have yeah. these stories. <laughs> tell it. Yeah, Hollywood like, is is so behind. Mm, like out very. of I think out of all of the creative like aspects of like storytelling or whatever, it's like film and then dance. Like mm. the dance industry. I only know that because of my sister. So far behind. Like so far behind mm-hmm. it's like ridiculous at yeah. this point. I'm not surprised, but also I'm like, you got you it can't keep happening. Like, this, yeah, it's it has getting to like at, at a point, point where I'm yeah. like, bruh, okay, like there there has to be something. And at this point, it's kind of like I I want to do like what Tyler Perry did, but like better and grander and actually like on a Hollywood scale. I don't even want to jump into the Tyler Perry. <laughs> we don't have to because I really yeah, dislike him. Like, I don't yo, like him at all. Yeah, thank you. But I'm I'm good on him. No, it's, it's whatever you did your thing. Cool. Um. <laughs> but like you know, what I'm saying the studios, the the hiring black people to the even though he blackballed to black women anyway. But do you know what I'm saying? Like just, and I hate his stories. But he kept everything black. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He put money in those people's pockets, and for then sure. you, you have your own studio. But like, he's not doing enough for me. It's not enough. The same he's story. Also a coon, the same so. story he tells 
is the same things that black people complain about with major Hollywood. Mm. So you having your own spinoff of these black caricatures is is lame as hell. Um, but it's lame. And my thing is, I think like at when the time that he was doing it as a playwright, I think was important because it's like saying niggas taking back it's what like, was used yeah. against us it and purpose. being like, hey, jokes on you. We 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 get to use this shit as a term of endearment, or like we're laughing at this shit because we actually know that this is how shit was for real, yeah. or like could be could be some people's experiences. But then once he got into Hollywood and the movies and shit, I was like, okay, you're done because it's starting get to get it. repetitive, and I hate it. No, I get that, and it's just like the same repetitive stories. Just like <sighs> like when I hear see movies like Gods of, Gods and Gods of Egypt, and they like. All the guys are like white, except maybe like one or two, and it's just like, fam, you know how many black like it's Africa, bro. <laughs> it's literally Africa. But then you just don't. I mean, Hollywood's just so white. You just don't get a lot of those opportunities. You really have to make your own your own shit to get those opportunities. Like for sure, unless you, you know, what I'm saying like you get something. It's like it has to be specific to black people, mm -hmm. like Black Panther. Like, oh, well, you, you have to. These people got to be black. So, yeah, yeah we'll shit. fund it because all of these people have to be black. So, go ahead. Even X Men. Even X Men is based off of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's real shit. Like, these are our stories. Like, they don't necessarily, they don't have to be whitewashed. Yeah. Mm hmm. At this point, I was about to repeat what he was about to say. <laughs> They said that in Deadpool about the X-Men. Um, it was a scene, and Ryan Reynolds was walking. He was, inter in, you know, interacting. You know how Deadpool is. He yeah, had, like, quick wall. Like, yeah, he, he an eyeball. But he was, like, uh, saying, like, yeah, you know, it's just the X-Men, you know, which was actually something about racism back in the 60s. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they use it um, to describe black people and shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. it, it shit was fire. Nice. But, you know, also, too, it's, like, there's like, it's like, on one hand, you can only blame the people who are doing the stuff so much. Like, if if these people are like, oh, like, I love X-Men or whatever, whatever, and they're white, like, I can't blame them for not knowing the exact origin of it being black. Like, there's, mm -hmm. a, there, you know what I'm saying? No, there's I a certain it. stuff where you're just like... Because even then, even I can't then, even do, you know what I'm saying? Because at, even like, your parents failed, and then America failed, mm -hmm. and then Hollywood failed. Whatever school you went to to study the writing or directing, whatever, failed. And there's, what, what am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can yeah. only be, like, so mad. And it's also just, like, we just got to do our own stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why Issa Rae left HBO, yeah. because they keep canceling all our stuff. She's like, bro. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, nah, rightfully so. So it's just like you know, I mean, it's coming, it's it's coming up, it's slow, and it, it's annoying, but yeah. you know, what I mean, it it's coming because yeah. I'm coming, and, and y'all not gonna like me. I heard you, heard you. Like, oh, I heard you that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> then for like the last part is uh like when Insidious and they talked about astral projection and that's based off of uh as far as mythology wise. Uh, Aborigine in mm -hmm. Australia, they have they, they had stories about dream time, and it's literally like what in the West we call astral projection. Like you go to a, like you go to sleep, but you go to like to a different place, similar to similar to like how uh, uh, Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? They lay down, or whatever, go to the ancestral plane. Like you can do all that type of stuff with the dream time. So close it out. Have you ever had? Astro projected and what was the if so what was the most significant? No, one? but <laughs> this uh, this one person wanted me to do it with them, and I was like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. You scared? Yeah, my thing is, listen, I'm not gonna do. First of all, I don't. Those are one of those things where you need to know enough to do it. You should not just be doing mm -hmm. it. Like it's the same thing with like if you're burning incense in your house, if you're burning sage, you just don't do it. If you don't know what you're doing, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. When, if I get, and then first of all, I have too much anxiety. The minute that I see I'm outside my body, 
<laughs> it's over. I'm freaking out waking up. And if I don't wake up, <laughs> I'm haunting somebody at that <laughs> point. You know what I mean? But I just don't know enough about it that I'm not going to I'm not going to. I'm not going to fuck with that shit. I'm going to leave it to whoever be doing it that can do it, the pros. No, and, I get that. And, and I'm on my business. Don't right come now. bother me. If you're interested in it, uh, there's a book called Astrodynamics by uh, Robert Bruce, I believe. Mm. So it gives you how to, what to expect, what you'll see, all that cool stuff. Um, to wrap up, um, I want to ask a couple more questions. Uh, just being a, in, in your line of work, just in the industry, uh, how much of your sexuality played and just like your presence on set and just interactions with artists and creators and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, <laughs> as far as directing, like it wasn't an issue because like it was like Khalil and Ty and like it was a small crew and, you know, kind of a small cast and like majority of like the people who did like come on extras or helped out whatever I knew. So there wasn't really like a, it wasn't really like a thing except for like, <laughs> people who I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Like, the one, there was this one guy, I have, it, I have it screenshotted, it's actually on one of my little highlights from the film on my Instagram. And this one guy was like, oh, he was like, I had texted him, I think he was like an actor or somebody. And I was like, hey, like, just whatever, whatever, my name's Eula, I'm checking, whatever. He was like, oh, yeah, he was like, I already, he was like, yeah, the director hit me up, I already talked to him. I said, I, I am the director. <laughs> I think I did see that. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I am the director. And he was like, oh, that. I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so that wasn't really much. I'm sure, like, once I start to get a little bit up there, it will definitely get a little You think so? Hard. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like Hollywood is very welcoming of LGBTQ plus, like, people. I could be mistaken. I would agree. Not it's sure. not. I'm not saying. I, I, it. I don't know. I'm not I, saying I'm, it in my in like. I'm not saying it for my sexuality. Mm, I'm saying it for me as being a woman. Like uh. I'm not. I don't. Here's my thing. I don't ever think that my sexuality will ever. Like, play a part to the point where like you know what I'm saying it would like affect or like people would be like mm, I don't know because you're like gay whatever because first of all I'm not gonna let that slide. That's not a thing. But I think being a woman, especially in Hollywood, is going to be a little difficult. For sure. Um, but being gay and then, like, doing the music stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a different beast in itself. Because it's like most men don't respect the fact that I am comfortable and know that I am just a lesbian. And it's really fucking annoying, actually, being hit on by men, even after the fact, even if they know beforehand. It's really annoying. Yeah, and, it, and it makes my job difficult because I'm like, I don't want to work with or for you. I don't even want to be in the same proximity because, like... Like, me being, like, a lesbian does not save me from sexual assault or coercion or any of that. Because it almost happened on tour. Copy. So, it's just kind of like, sexuality, eh. Like, maybe if it was, like, a couple years ago, it would be an issue. But, like, now, I mean, what if people are just going to say stuff, even though they're trying to, like, <laughs> illegalize gay marriage again. Now I'm just like, whatever, it doesn't matter. But, like... You know, people are just going to talk. But being a woman, like, especially because, like, Hollywood is still kind of man-dominated, that's going to be a little, like, mm. And, mm-hmm. then, like, the music industry is, like, male-dominated, like, as far as, like, rap and stuff. And that's kind of, like, where most of my stuff comes from, it's from guys who rap and stuff. I don't really do a lot of R&B stuff. So that in itself is just, like, mm. it's very uncomfortable to, like, have to, like, say no to multiple advances even after the fact. And so that's just kind of, that's that. But I'm, they ain't finna get me. <laughs> like, I remember one time we were at, I don't know what show we were at, and somebody in the entourage or whatever was like, oh, do you want a drink? And I was, I, mind you, I'm like near the bar because I was finna get a drink. Like, obviously I want a drink because <laughs> I just got here. 
And then he was like, oh, we got a bottle in the back in the green room. Mind you, I haven't been in the green room for like a whole hour because I've been out here shooting the show. He was like, I'm going to get you a cup, bring it back. I said, if you bring a cup out here, bring it back, I'm not drinking it. My, I mean, like, I know we're in a big-ass public place, but also I'm, like, in the front and going backstage. And But I was like, I'm not drinking that out yeah, of the back room. You like, yeah. you're, you're nuts. I was like, I didn't watch you pour it. He called me. He was like, I don't know why you have an attitude. And I was like, oh, I'm just going <laughs> to go over here. So that's fun. I love being a woman. That was sarcastic. Don't say it sarcastically. <laughs> like, don't say it sarcastically. Women, women, women put have a lot of pull in the industry. Like, what was that? Uh, what was that uh, the Netflix series? Was that Women in Charge or something like that? Or mm. Women in Hip Hop or something like that? And it was showing how a lot of the, the damn near every major artist, the success was because of a a woman who was the A and R secretary or just. Literally, oh, yeah. manager who was able to facilitate all this dope shit they don't for get the them. Shit done. They just didn't necessarily get the same spotlight as a, a Dame Dash. Or, mm, uh, mm-hmm. It's it doesn't happen without y'all. You know what oh I'm yeah, yeah. So it's just like I think, and that, I think that goes back to narrative and just how we tell these stories on screen. It's like no, like tell the truth, tell the full story. And then it, it will allow, and it, I think it will change people's, the average male, his perspective on just like how, their approach and when it comes to our industry and just when respect and how they should approach women and stuff like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Kimon, did you have any questions? Yeah, I just got three. Um, we just... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you good? I was about to lie to. I just got three. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey yo, I'm sorry. That was just mad funny. Man. You like you got a you got a couple questions. Yeah, I got three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got about three of them. Watch out again a lot. Nah, but would you say Levi's like your most proudest product that you was a part of? Mm. Yes and no. Why no? No, because before that, I put out a short docu about my mental health. It's on YouTube. It's called A Manic Mind. Go check it out. Look into it. Absolutely. Love um. It. So basically, I documented myself for about six months. Um. And basically, the basis is just like being a creative, but also dealing with depression and, you know, stuff like that. Um. I had a few suicide attempts in my life, like, early on. So just, like, going through that and also being a creative is very hard. Like, it's hard to be a creative in general. It's hard to create. Mm -hmm. But, like, when it's times where, like, my room looks like a hoarder's room and I don't want to move, but I have a photo shoot, like, you know what I'm saying? That shit. It's, like, hard dealing with that. Um, And during that time, I was really going through it. So that's my most proudest, uh, I think, project because... It touched a lot of people, which I wasn't really expecting. I had a small screening for it, but um, it touched a lot of people, like people I didn't even know. And they're like, this helped me open up a conversation with my mom. And you know what I'm saying? Because it's important. Like, I'm really, I've always been open about my mental health. I think it's really important. Like, um, I like how, like, athletes are starting to talk about it now because that shit is real. Like, they're not invincible. They're still people. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's just important to open up the conversation um, so that, is one of my proudest moments. But Levi is also because, like, that's a whole entire feature film. And I did that at 24. And a lot of people don't even do their first feature film until they're, like, 30. That's crazy. Absolutely. So, yes. Nah, I appreciate that. I appreciate the transparency. For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you. so earlier we asked about, like, inspiration from different directors and stuff. And I really wanted to ask as far as, like, your steals, like, Back in the day when you first did them, how did you find an inspiration to capture the right still? And is that same method, like, used today? Hmm. Uh, man, I don't know. I just, um, sometimes I just get ideas. So, I, I honestly, I'm be real. I draw a lot of, like, inspirations of stuff that I want to capture or want to do from my dreams. Like, could you not? Like, majority of, like, my movie ideas that are in my notes are in my voice memos. I would say 80% of them are from dreams. Mm. Hmm. 
like some shit like that shit would be fire as movies so then i when i wake up in the morning i voice memo it or i write it in my notes um but sometimes um it's really when i see stuff like i'll drive past a street or a building a pole Mm -hmm. just something and i'm like oh shit like this would be dope as a photo shoot Mm -hmm. so when i do you know, do, like, a production for, like, an entire photo shoot. Like, I did, um like, an abstract one of, like, high-end fashion in, like, a field. And I had, like, you know, like, avant-garde, like, you know, like, stencils on people's faces and stuff. Um, that was because I saw that field. And I was like, it would be dope if somebody was, like, in a fucking suit in this bitch. Right. And it was just, like, mad raw. So there was mm-hmm. that. So it was just, like, honestly, just seeing stuff. Like, if I'm in the house, I don't really come up with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But once I get outside, it's just like, oh, I'll see something. And I'm like, yeah, let me do that. At first, I was just shooting, like, landscape and stuff. But I hate landscape uh, photography. I'm not a fan. (laughs) Like, buildings. People do some raw shit. Like, the gas stations. Like, I'm like, that's raw. I tried it one time. Absolutely (laughs) not. It was a terrible photo. And I was like, you know what? It's kind of like inspiration by your environment. Yeah. Yeah. So, wherever I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. And so the last question, because I only had three. <laughs> <laughs> what type of team do you have to have for, like, the stuff that you do? Like, guys, you do a lot. So I can only imagine it's, like, three, four people that you talk to every day to keep you focused, sane, kind of on track. I don't have that many people. I had one person, but he moved out of town. Oh, Wow. That, that sounded so, so, so sad. Oh, sad. Oh, so sad. No, Let's wrap it up. Right. He sounded You sounded like somebody like that I was talking to somebody and you fell asleep and you just said something out your sleep to make sure that you felt like I was listening. <laughs> um, but shout out Tommy, a.k.a. J. Rivers. He was the first person that I brought on to Levi. Honestly, the only person, because Khalil was like, bring whoever, you know, is part of your team. He was the only person I brought on. He's the only person. He's not the only person I trust, but he is somebody I trust with everything. Like, I trust him to get stuff done. He did stuff for Levi. If, like, we didn't have him. Levi wouldn't have happened. And, like, during, like, COVID and stuff, we would go out at, like, 2 a.m. downtown, and we would just shoot and take pictures. He would, like, be my muse and help me practice. Like, I would just take mad photos of him. Um, he was also just like my best friend. We hung out a lot. Um, he's actually my assistant for me being the creative director for Love because it's a lot. It's a lot. And she was like, "If you need an assistant, just bring somebody on." And I called him. He lives in North Carolina, and I was like, "Hey, I know you live all the way in North Carolina, but you know, um, that's my guy, man. He he's he's a get it done person, bro. Like." Need people like, like just um like what the bar that we shot at at Levi was in like West like Lackawanna West Seneca. Right. No idea. So I'm like old white guy was super excited to let us film. I'm like, how did you even? He was like, yeah, we shooting out at this bar. I'm like, how did you even get in contact with this man? He's like, I just made it happen. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he was, you know, what I'm saying he's he's that guy. Like he's gonna get that shit done for you and make sure you're on top of stuff. He's gonna have shit organized. He's the type of nigga to have a briefcase, a briefcase, like a laptop briefcase bag. So, you know, he mean business. <laughs> For real. But you definitely need a team more than one person. I will say that. I'm working on it. But I just don't like people. Got Good it. Words. <laughs> so, except y'all, y'all cool. Appreciate I like y'all. That. He's all right. I don't know how genuine that is. I liked his three questions. He's all right. um, so uh, before we wrap up, we brought up Levi a lot. Mm. What exactly is like as much as you want to give for anybody who hasn't seen it? What is like the plot or just the storyline of Levi? Damn it! You know, I thought this question was coming earlier, and I had it. I was like, I know they're gonna ask what it's about because all of the podcasts, like the media tour we did for Levi, it's all everybody asked. It's like, what is it about? Mind you, if I was doing it by myself, I had a hard time saying it because, like me, movies like. I could talk about movies for, like, a whole 24 hours. Not even kidding. Even if it's my own. So now that I cannot pass the question on to the Khalil, who played Levi, <laughs> I'm going to try my very best. 
um, basically, right? So it's about a kid who uh, his father uh, fakes his death because he got into some trouble with some shit. He was in debt. They was like, we going to pee, pee, pee your whole family, nigga, if you don't pay up. So he was like, boom, I'm going to just die. Death's over. Except it's not. It gets passed on to the family. So he, him and his mom moved to Buffalo, and he ended up getting tied up in whatever shit his father um, uh, had going on. And so he's, like, doing shit he shouldn't be doing. But it's basically just, like, a snowfall. It's a... What's the other one? I don't know. I don't watch dark shows. Power. Power. Yeah. More, maybe more so power, mm. because it was more. I guess snowfall. I mean, he He's was like young a Tariq. too. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I only watched like a few seasons of that, and then I stopped. They typecast him as a bad black kid every time. Who? The, whoever the kid who plays Tariq. Michael. He just Michael got Rainey. that face. Bro, they just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? The face you can hate. <laughs> it's like, nah. you ungrateful <laughs> child. <laughs> Myra shot back. What was the other movie he was in with Common? Love, L U V. But he was young as fuck, yeah. What was the. He wasn't. Was it Are You There Yet? No. no. What was the movie? He was in the one with Ice Cube. As a disgruntled. Yeah, Barbershop. Barbershop Three or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't watch the third one. Blood and the Crystal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Christmas yeah, the one that got uh, Nikki in it and Regina Hall. Type guess. Yeah. Oh, I did watch that. But, okay. um. So that's Levi. That is Levi. Definitely appreciate you pulling up. Did you have anything you wanted to say before we wrap up? I don't think so. Where can everybody find you? Instagram, handles, all that. Uh, Eula Banks <laughs> underscore for Instagram. Do not look me up on Facebook if you want to, like, do business or just see my art. Facebook is not the place for that. You be on their wallet? I be on their wallet. <laughs> Shenanigans. As everybody else do. Shenanigans. <laughs> Facebook is for fun. Instagram, business, and art. I mean, I be sharing my stuff on Facebook, but Facebook ain't probably like that. When I say funny stuff, it's when it be popping. But I be wallin'. Mm-mm. I'll look into it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not everybody gonna go on her page. Um, you ain't gonna find it. Because it's under a name that y'all don't know. I'll find it. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, it might be connected to, through my stuff, so you might find it. Anyway. Oh, you know what? I do have something to say. <laughs> Talk your shit. No, I'm just playing. Um, Basically, I just want to say, because I say this, uh, everything that I go on, I just want y'all to know that you are not alone when you're struggling with your mental health and stuff. Please go get help. Reach out to somebody. I promise you things get better. And honestly, your girl's living proof. So, you know, if I'm still kicking it, y'all can kick it because it wasn't looking good. But now I'm doing movies and shit. So for all the kids out there, kids be watching your podcast. Yep. For all the Mm -hmm. kids out there, you know what I'm saying? But not nah, for real. Um, and also keep going. Yeah. This shit can get hard, struggling as far as being a creative, and the most like annoying and sad and frustrating times end up being the most laughable times when you look back and like, I can't believe I was worried about this. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I was like tripping off this. Because I was doing that. I was tripping off when I didn't do the movies. Like, the short films I was trying to do when I couldn't get anybody to do it. Ha, 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 jokes on you. I did a feature film. So, there's that. Word. Zoom in on this part, too. Like this. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> That's it. Hell yeah. You got to go through it to get to it. You know what I'm saying? Hell the yeah. emotion will pass. For sure. Just keep, just keep one step ahead of, just in keep front swimming. of the other. Yeah. Door. That part. Marathon. Dang. Appreciate you. No label to pop. We out. Oh. Peace. I didn't know we was doing peace on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my signature.